All right, students, for today's assignment, we're talking about tax policies. Our question-focused document is this cartoon from Thomas Nast called Income Tax Liberty Being Weighed Down from 1878. Look at this question and try and identify what you think are some issues from the past that people still feel today. Think about who this woman is, who she represents, and what's weighing her down. What's it say on that weight? It's income tax. How might this problem, this feeling people had in the past, be similar to a feeling that people have today? After you've done that, make sure you create a question about the document. Today we're going to learn about Trump's tax cuts. So after Trump took office, uh, Congress started debating whether or not new taxes should be changed. In December of 2017, Congress passed new tax legislation after Trump's encouragement. Trump had taken office in January of 2017, but by December, it got to Trump's desk. This new legislation included a tax cut on people's incomes as well as a tax break for corporations. The tax law went into effect in 2018, so taxes that were just filed in April of 2019 revealed the impact of Trump's tax cuts. Read this article for more information about the impact of the tax cuts. For most Americans, this is the day when federal income taxes are due. 2018 was the first year in which the Trump administration's big tax cut took effect. The bill lowered taxes for most people, but not for everyone. NPR's Jim Zaroli looks at who the winners and losers are. The 2017 tax cut was President Trump's biggest legislative accomplishment to date. It sharply lowered the corporate tax rate and allowed businesses to bring home the money they made overseas tax-free. But it also cut taxes on people. Here was Trump in his 2018 State of the Union address. Your first question asks you, what did the Trump administration do related to taxes? And we just had our answer there. The corporate tax rate went down. Companies that make money overseas can bring that home tax-free. And individuals also had their taxes cut. What does it mean to have your taxes cut? means the rate that you pay is lower. Why do people support this? Let's listen to what Trump says. Millions of Americans will have more take-home pay starting next month, a lot more. And that was true. Mark Mazur of the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center says people at every part of the income spectrum benefited at least a little from Trump's tax cut. Low-income families with children might see a tax cut of 50 or $100 a year. In the middle-income uh, categories, the tax cuts would be several hundred dollars. And he says high-end taxpayers may have saved thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars. Though Trump initially promised that rich people would be hurt by his tax bill, they weren't, says former Obama administration official David Kamen. Okay, before we hear from the former Obama administration official, how does this information tell us why people would support cutting taxes on individuals? If your taxes are cut, what do you take more home of? Everyone likes money, right? So if you're paying less in taxes, you get to keep more money. Why would anybody oppose this? The top. Uh, are not paying on average more because of this bill, quite the opposite. They're getting a disproportionate uh, amount of this tax cut. Still, most people, some two-thirds of American taxpayers, got a tax cut, says Mark Mazur. But Mazur says there's a problem for Republicans. I think a lot of Americans don't really seem to, to feel that tax cut. In surveys done over the past year, most Americans say they don't think they benefited from the cut. 
even when they did. David Kamen says the tax cut kind of got lost. For middle to low income Americans, the tax cut was not all that large. It was then spread out over time as you know they would just get a somewhat bigger paycheck immediately. As a result. Okay. This idea that there's a difference in the amount of taxes that were cut for the lower earners and the higher earners. So those who made more money got a bigger tax cut. They consider this disproportionate. Some people at the lower end didn't feel like they had any taxes cut, even though the numbers show that they do. So some people support this because the tax cut helped who more than who. That makes any sense. Who benefited the most from the tax cut? That's the real question. And that causes some people to oppose it because it helps some more than others. So with what you know right now, should we cut taxes on individuals and corporations? We're going to be debating whether or not people have a, an obligation or responsibility to paying taxes. This is going to help us reflect on that. So now we're going to look at a piece of legislation from the past, Senate Joint Resolution Number 40. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled, two-thirds of each house, that the following article is proposed as an amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which, when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, shall be valid to all purposes as a part of the Constitution. So our first paragraph is just telling us that this will become part of the Constitution if the states approve it. Article number 16, XVI is 16. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. For our purposes, we need to know what this means. What would this article give Congress the power to create? A tax on incomes. So this isn't sales taxes. This isn't what you pay in addition to purchasing something. This is a tax on your income. This is a tax on how much money you make from doing your job. What led to us debating this policy? What led to us debating the creation of an income tax? It's kind of interesting to think about this because our country really does exist in part because of taxes. Remember that when we were a colony of Great Britain, some Americans were very unhappy about the way the British taxed us. If you remember the slogan, no taxation without representation from the American Revolution. Anyway, it's because Americans didn't like taxes that America, the United States of America, became a country. When we became a country, shortly after gaining our independence and forming the United States Constitution, as we know it, the American government started a whiskey rebellion in Pennsylvania when they created the 1791 excise whiskey tax. Farmers were unhappy that they were being taxed on the whiskey that they were making from the crops. So that was just a tax on whiskey in the past, and that almost caused another revolution. It luckily, it only was a rebellion. America created its first income tax in 1861. The Revenue Act of 1861 was created to help pay for the cost of the Civil War. The tax was 3% of all incomes over $800. They then passed the Revenue Act of 1862, 3% tax on incomes over above 600, 5% for incomes over 10,000, and raised again in 1864. It ended 
1872 because the war was over. Why do we need taxes? The government needs taxes to operate. Why did the government need to increase taxes and need more money in the 1860s? We were fighting a civil war. Wars are expensive. So in order to meet the demands of the war, we created an income tax. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, political groups such as the populists and the progressives pushed for financial and economic reforms, including income taxes. The idea is that people who make more money are going to have to pay more to support the government. The Supreme Court struck down an 1894 tax on incomes because they said the Constitution didn't give the government the power to tax incomes. In 1909, progressive in Congress tried to again attach an income tax to a tariff bill. Conservatives proposed making a constitutional amendment for the tax, thinking people would oppose it and an interest in taxes would go away. So those who actually came up with the idea of a constitutional amendment were trying to kill the idea of an income tax. But instead, it results in us debating this resolution. So what's going on at the time? Our government needs what to be able to function? Money. How were we going to get that money? That's why we were debating the creation of an income tax. Section one supporting question is why do some people believe the relationship between the government and the people requires an income tax to exist? I'm gonna read this speech. 1909 by Ollie M. James. Ollie M. James said, the income tax is the most equitable of all systems of taxation. It is the ideal way to support the government. Let those who prosper little pay little, for they are least indebted to the government. Prosper we've talked about means to do well. So someone who's prospering probably has a good job and is making lots of money. So those who are prospering little, meaning not doing very well, are not going to have to pay very much. Let those who prosper more pay more. Let those who prosper most pay most. Let those who prosper greatly pay greatly. For certainly they have been most blessed and are therefore most indebted to the government. What man is so ungrateful to his country that he is unwilling to pay a small tax upon his income to help sustain and perpetuate the government under which he enjoys such success? This paragraph, this sentence saying, if you are able to live in America and do well in America, should you have to support America? That's the idea of sustain and perpetuate the government under which he enjoys success. Mr. Speaker, this battle for an income tax will go on. That is the people's government. This is the people's government and the right will prevail. During all these years, the mighty rich, an army of millionaires have been exempted from taxation but the people are now aroused. There are two lines of battle drawn for this great contest. Under which flag will you stand? The flag of democracy or the flag of plutocracy? A plutocracy is a government that's run by the wealthy. So are we gonna be a government run by the people, the common people, a democracy? Or are we going to be a government run by the wealthy, the extremely wealthy? What reasons does Mr. James here give us for supporting taxation? What ideas did he hammer home in his speech? Why does he think people need to pay taxes? Why does he think some need to pay more than others? 
And so if in the past people believed that we needed to pay taxes to support the government that allows us to be successful in this country, what do some people still believe about taxes today? Why do they think people need to pay taxes? And who do they think needs to pay the most in taxes? Sections two supporting question, why do some people believe that taxes harm the relationship between the people and the government? We're gonna look at this cartoon from Puck Magazine. Way down in section two. This one right here. So who is sitting in this chair? This woman represents democracy, maybe our country, maybe the idea that we should do what the people want. How democracies operate, they're based on voting, right? This guy back here, his head is a ballot box. You've seen cartoons with this image in it, at least the, the ballot box part. When people would vote, they'd drop their ballot into something that looked like this. So does he represent the voters? What are the voters trying to tell the government? This man, this court jester, is trying to convince the government, our democracy, to create an income tax. How do the people feel about taxes? How do you feel about taxes? So the main idea is focusing on how people feel about taxes. Is it something that anybody likes to pay or wants to pay? Is that what we're learning about how people felt about taxes in the past? Is that any different from how people feel about taxes today? So in the past, we have our government debating the creation of an income tax, which is a tax based on how much money you're making. So remember that our government needs money in order to exist, to fund itself. So they create a tax, an income tax amendment called the 16th Amendment. It was ratified and became law in 1913. Since its creation, what has our government continued to do? Have we continued to collect taxes? While that rate has always fluctuated, people have always felt strongly about taxes. So we created an income tax to fund our government, and the consequence has been what? Taxes go up, taxes go down. Very seldomly are people happy with where they are. This timeline shows you taxes going up and taxes going down over time. Typically, what would happen is during a war, we would have to raise our tax rates in order to fund the war. Let's just look at this timeline to see how tax rates have changed over time. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So comparing and contrasting these, what are we debating in both cases? It's taxes, right? In the past, we were just debating an income tax. But in our article, we learned not just about income tax, but also corporate taxes, taxes paid by companies. I'll give you extra credit if you want to complete the policy advice for this assignment. We're deciding whether or not we should support or oppose Trump's tax cuts for companies and individuals. Do you believe that people should pay less in taxes? If you have questions, Please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help.